hi how are you i am good thanks for asking uh, shall we start now yeah yeah sure. uh, uh, let's start with a brief introduction first okay. yeah, sure. so i have around years experience in java and its related technology so in my current organization i am working as a back end developer and overall this is my roles and responsibility here and technology wise spring boot microservices apache kafka and uh, uh, for back end we are using oracle db fine so your current organization name is uh, current organization name but uh, <laughs> my client is i am working so if i ask you to rate yourself out of 10 in java data structure and sql how much you will rate yourself java it's around uh, okay and what about data structure and sql uh sql uh, okay for the uh, database and uh, data structure okay. then right yes okay so uh, let's start with java first do you know what are atomic operations yeah in multi threaded environment uh, what happens uh, we can have variables so what happens multiple threads are try to access that particular variable so the readability is not available let's say thread 1 changed a uh, variable value and thread 2 also want to access that variable so that particular point of time the visibility is not with uh, that uh, thread 2 so the uh, data inconsistency inconsistency may occur so for that uh, we can use a uh, volatile keyword to avoid such situation okay so uh, okay you know what is collection collection is nothing but uh, we can say uh, it's a group of object uh, or we can say if you want to bind some group of objects into a unit so that we can use uh, collections so collection is nothing but an interface in java so it has a child like list set so and also uh, we can ha- we have implemented class like array list link list has set okay and what is collections collections is a class okay yeah. what is the usage of that class collections have uh, multiple methods like collections dot sort we have to sort uh, the collection and uh, also a few methods like if you want to synchronize then we have synchronize methods so some utility operation if you want to perform on a uh, collection then we have this uh, collections class okay thanks so uh, You know what is optional? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a Java 8 feature. It is for like uh, generally in uh, Java, what happens? Uh, we are getting multiple places null point exception. So to avoid that exception, we have this uh, optional, and it has um, multiple methods like optional off and uh, generally to avoid null point exception, we are using uh, that it's a Java 8 feature. Okay, fine. So, uh, you know uh, what is the singleton class? and why we use it you know why we create singleton okay so singleton means i think one j one per jvm if you want to create object of a class that is uh, only one object per jvm so in, the, in such case we can have the singleton design pattern what happens we if we want to connect to a database and if you want single data source so then we can create our data source object as singleton so like that so we can use and also in spring beans are singleton right Okay. How we can create a singleton class? Uh, yeah, it has uh, some like we have process steps to follow. Like uh, how we want to declare a class. Like uh, we can have method which will return object of that particular class, and uh, we have a private constructor first of all, so that uh, no one can create instance directly. And inside the method, we can have this. Uh, generally, we have static method like get instance of or get instance. so uh, that static method will return uh, our object and we have that uh, variable that is volatile and we can uh, double check and also we want to thread set then we can use synchronize block inside that method to instance it okay fine uh, uh, can you name few methods of object class uh, yes object class has uh, like uh, twisting method also has code equals and I think clone is also there. Okay. So, uh, you know, we have a synchronized block and a synchronized method. So, uh, which one is better to follow, synchronized block or synchronized method? Generally, if our we need to check the code uh, first of all. Okay. If it is uh, feasible, then we can use with method also. But uh, if only uh, one block of our method is uh, like uh, we can we, if you want to thread shape single line or single object instances and something like that then we can use a synchronized block 
if we want to secure our method so that if uh, multiple threads came and we want one by one then uh, we can use uh, synchronized method okay what is volatile uh, yeah. so uh, volatile as a keyword is uh, java so by which uh, if we declare variable as volatile then we can so uh, what happens uh, it will always return the latest updated value if multiple threads are updating the values then it will always return the latest updated value okay fine so uh, uh, can you please repeat the last one what you said volatile uh, will always give you the latest updated value okay yeah. fine so uh, you know what is string string is a sequence of character and it's a class in java it's a so immutable class what make it special from other class it has like uh, if we are storing this class so uh, we have spatial area that is string constant pool so if uh, whenever we are creating object of it it will create object into a string constant pool if uh, we are using string literals okay yeah. so that uh, duplicates oh, okay. fine please continue yeah yeah so if uh, let's suppose uh, if we want to update the uh, string then what happens uh, it it won't uh, like uh, it will create new object instead of uh, up appending uh, that particular object so every time we are updating that it will create new object for us and uh, if we have reference variable then that particular object point to that that particular reference variable will point new object okay so so name few design patterns on which you have worked on mostly single uh, singleton and we have factory design pattern and builder design pattern okay. also we have adapter design pattern so how you implement factory design pattern factory design pattern is like uh, to implement it we can use abstract classes and okay. uh, by using abstract class we can have uh, let's start with the example Okay, uh, I want to generate uh, object of employee. So I I have one based on the department. Okay, let's see. So uh, so and let's suppose I have IT department and government department. So based on the input, I want to uh, provide the object of uh, that particular type. So I have this abstract class employee factory. Okay, so in this class, I will uh, have one abstract method which will accept that type of uh, employee like uh, sorry based on the department of the employee so we have one method uh, get uh, employee and it will accept one string argument that is our uh, uh, department so based on this department uh, we have a child of it like uh, can have two methods which are extending that particular uh, class one class is uh, IT department employee and second one is uh, that is our government department employee so in this class we can have uh, we can write how to return the object and uh, what happens when we create instance of uh, IT department then just we need to pass that uh, argument from our method and it will return us that particular object okay fine so uh, let's move to data structure do you know uh, what is linked list? Yes, so uh, linked list is a data structure uh, which have like we can we have nodes and uh, each node has uh, data as well as address of next node. So uh, okay, yeah, please continue. Yeah, so uh, if you want uh, like uh, object to be modified frequently, then we should use that uh, linked list. If we have to perform CRUD operation on linked list and array list, so which one is better to use array list or link list if we have to perform card operation card operation okay. card operation is uh, writing reading updating and inserting so which operations are frequent so is it writing or reading twice we have to perform each operation so for creating which you will use array list or link list i'm asking in that context no i did not get okay. you yeah. Uh, I'm asking. Uh, you have to perform CRUD operation. Like yes, yes. You have to separately perform a cre uh, creation of creation. Mm -hmm. You have to separately perform a updation. So or creation uh, which you will use array list or uh, link list. Okay. So like I have four different tasks. Yeah, yeah. One, one uh, creation, one is updation, one is deletion. Mm -hmm. So in these four tasks, you have your own choice. Mm -hmm. 
to use array list or linked list. So for creation, which you will prefer, array list or linked list? I think for creation, I will prefer uh, array list. Array list, okay. And for updation? Updation, I will prefer linked list. Okay. And for deletion? Deletion, if I delete. Deletion also linked list. Okay, fine. So why you prefer uh, array list in creation? Uh, like uh, if we are adding element, uh, uh, then its uh, complexity is just order of one. It should not have. I think uh, if we are adding element, then we have to provide both have I think complexity of order of one. Link list of the same. Okay, how how array list works? Yeah, so let's we have ten elements in the start with the zero element, so it will work on the index in that array. So whenever we are adding element, it will start from zero to nth index. So if we are deleting element uh, in between so it requires some shuffle of that delay so that is the concern after that if we are updating that element, and if you want to update also uh, we need to do some operations okay so you don't think error list uh, instead of array list you have to use linked list now uh, while inserting because array, array list array, array list to use array uh, every yes, time yeah, yeah. Every time you have to change the size. Okay. Do you know how hash hash map works? Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. So hash map internally works like uh, we have to work on the concept of hashing. So we have key value pairs in hash map. So generally we are looking into the key. So and key uh, we have buckets like similar to array we have. So in that particular but let's suppose the size of hash map is uh, 16 and the bucket is start from 0 to uh, 15 so while adding the element into the this particular bucket uh, it will calculate uh, the uh, hash code of our uh, object and based on that uh, uh, capacity mode by capacity we have so let's suppose we have 16 capacity so it will return value between 0 to 15 so then uh, we get any index uh, out of it so whatever the index we are getting we are adding element to that particular bucket so if uh, there is a same index for different object so it will use as a linked list and it will append to the linked list similarly okay. for get operation like if we have it on uh, index number 5 okay mm -hmm. uh, we have multiple data stored yes any um, there are multiple times we receive index number 5 okay bucket for that bucket index we receive so and later on like 10 time we receive uh, index number 5 we keep on storing index uh, data at index number 5 mm -hmm. so how uh, which approach hash map will follow to store that data at that particular index my, uh, this is my one question and second okay. question so how if we have to retrieve data from at that particular index mm -hmm. how we receive that data okay. so you have five fifth index and in, at fifth index you have five element around uh, as a link list. No, that, no i have um, i have data a set of data okay and the size is 50 so we have to insert that data in a hash map okay mm -hmm. okay and how hash map work it it works based on hash code yes like right? there is a there is a bucket and in that uh, its initial size is 16 and in that bucket we uh, got a index of that bucket and add on that index we store the data right this is how hash map store data key in a key value pair yes okay so uh, like assume if uh, we have a set of data and its size is 50 and we receive index number 5 30 times okay mm -hmm. to store that data so which approach this hash map will follow to store those set of 30 data at that particular index Okay, so uh, at that particular index, uh, it uh, append to the link list like uh, 30 times we receive that uh, same hash code. Okay, so okay. it will append, uh, and now in Java, it uh, it is it uses uh, the uh, binary tree to store the data. Okay, so in a tree form, yeah, in it will store data. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At some some threshold, it uh, like a few limited store into link list. If it is reaching to that limit, and then it will uh, convert the link list into the tree. Okay, fine. So you know what difference between set and a hash map? Uh, er, uh, set and a array list. Uh, yes. Uh, so set 
object uh, doesn't allow duplicate uh, values, uh, duplicate objects, mm -hmm. and uh, list allow uh, duplicate. And set doesn't uh, manage the order, and list manages the order. Okay, set is a class or a interface? Uh, set is an interface. And what are its classes? Uh, has set and link has okay. set. Okay. What is the difference between these two? Link has set and set. Uh, link has set. If you want to manage the order, then you should go for link has set. Okay. Order, then uh, has set. Okay. Let's move to data structure. This is good. So you know what are primary keys? Uh, yes. So uh, yeah, a primary key is a unique key uh, in a table. Uh, it cannot be null and it cannot be duplicate. Okay. Like I have a table student and I want to create a pr uh, primary key in that table. So I have four columns and I want to make three columns of, of those four as a primary key. Mm -hmm. Can I, can we create those three columns as primary key? If how, if yes, then how? My, my question is this, mm -hmm. is it possible to create a multiple primary key in a table? No, no. Only one key, okay. while primary key and key we can create, uh, other than that we can have it. Like unique key we can create. Okay, fine. So, uh, you know, what are rollback? Have you heard about rollback? Uh, yes. Okay. When, uh, what is it? So, uh, what happens if you are performing some operation on the transaction? For rollback, what it does if we perform a uh, half of the operation and something fails in between. So, in okay. such case, we need to uh, remove existing entries what what comes under this particular transaction so that uh, process is called rollback it will remove that transaction detail. okay and do we have to perform any special operation for that i don't think it's automatically managed transaction we have methods like commit and rollback if something fails we can to call that particular method and it will remove that data if something happens or exception occur Otherwise, yeah, two methods we have rollback and commit. Okay. So, what are difference between these two methods? Yeah, commit is uh, if everything fine, then uh, we perform commit operation. And if anything is break, let's suppose we have five operation and till fifth of uh, till fourth operation everything is fine, and in the fifth operation something uh, went wrong. So we will uh, erase all those operation by using rollback. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm done. Okay. Anything you want to know or us, you can ask. Okay, so I have questions regarding uh, technology stack and projects. Actually, we are in B2. B, uh, we have multiple projects. Okay. So, and uh, we have multiple modules. So, so we are, uh, architecture we are using is Spring Boot. Okay. And in uh, we have one project on Spring Boot. And we have three projects on drop wizard framework. Okay. Okay. And our team size is around 10 to 12. Okay. And just talking about technology. Okay. We are still hiring more in there. Mm -hmm. Placements also we are hiring. So our core team, tech team is in Google. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And in Google, we have uh, marketing team works and other than finance and other teams are in Mumbai and few of our team members are in Bangalore, Hyderabad. Okay. And our sales team is all over India, pan India. Okay. Uh, anything else? Yeah, yeah, it's nice talking to you. I will improve my knowledge based okay. on the discussion. Thank you so much. Fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's conclude. Thank you. Bye.